Hi everyone, in this video we're going to create an elegant React login register form. So as a lot of you loved my tutorials on creating React components, React applications and designing uh, login and React register forms, well in this video I'm going to create an awesome register and login form in React using animation. So this is actually going to be created in here, so you see it's pretty elegant and smooth and tidy up. So with animation you can move to a sign up page, you get this really awesome drop down and you can move back to the sign in and everything, you can switch between login and register just in a press of button with an awesome animation. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy these tutorials, I enjoyed making it and don't forget to push that like button, leave a subscribe and of course leave us a comment if you really loved this video tutorial and want more about this animation. So you can find the code repository in GitHub, so you can get the link below and you can enjoy using it. So thank you guys for watching, so let's get started. So let's just get started with the application and here I got an empty page which is just like a hello world application. Um, for the actual project I use the Create React app as always in my stories I use Create React app to set up the project, it's pretty basic so using CRA. I uh, created that and it got just like into hello world, I just set up everything and it got this hello world blank page in here running on a local host. Now before getting started we need to install a couple of things before just getting started. So first things first, I'm using yarn in here, I'm not using npm, so you're going to see me a lot using yarn. I'm going to do yarn add, first we're going to be adding styled components because we're going to be using styled components instead of like using isolated CSS modules or stuff like that. So I'm going to do um, styled components and this one is going to be saved. The only thing I'm going to be using for the animation you've seen before is actually Framer Motion. So Framer Motion is a great library, provides a spring animation as well as like a keyframe animation for uh, React. It just uses declarative API and it gives you everything you need to control the animation. It's pretty much one of the most loved animation libraries out there. And I did a tutorial about it, like, like you know, comparing different libraries of using uh, different React libraries of animation and like Favor Motion took pretty much the option one among them. So yeah, I'm gonna be installing this. We just just name it Frame Motion, just like that. And if you take a look on my package.json, so this is basically what we got in here. Uh, nothing too complicated. Just like style components, Frame Motion, all the other things are gonna be installed for you uh, from the CRA. After you install them, you are pretty much good to go. So I already did that. Already installed everything. Now let's jump into the actual code we need. So already run uh, the actual server. So make sure to your yarn starts before and getting started. So first things first in here, uh, basically let me just get rid of this logo. I got a hello world in here and also um, for that we got like an app container. So I created this using style.dev. I created that so I got width, height, full width, full height and I'm just centering using flexbox and I'm putting hello world inside of that. And since before like the actual what we want to create and everything of that um, like we can we can pretty much see uh, some like inspiration that I got it from uh, Behance. So let me just show you that here. Um, let's go to Behance, and this is actually exactly where I took all my inspiration from. So it belongs to this guy. So yeah, if he you know you can go and follow him on Behance.net. Um, but this is what we're going to be creating throughout all of this is just going to be referencing. So I'm going to put this in my other screen or other uh, monitor from this side and we can just get started uh, working things out so we can exactly know what part I'm going to be working on. So as I said before, we're going to be creating this and I'm going to be creating a set of components. I already put some simple components called Marginer. So you don't really need to worry about that, it just like gives us some margin, just a dummy components. Uh, here I'm going to create another component, I'm going to call it account box. So this account box component is going to allow us, it's pretty much the full box of the login and the register. So it's it's the full box that you know holds all the information, all the forms, all the animation, everything goes inside of that. So here I'm going to name first index.gsx and this is going to be the first entry point of the file. So I'm going to start off this like put react from react. As always, um, I'm going to have like a I'm just going to export a function which is going to be account box. It's going to hold up props as always. And here we, we can pretty much going to have like a container for it. So for this one, I'm going to have a simple container. So it's going to be a box container. Uh, it's going to be a styled dev and make sure to import styled components. So do that real quick. Uh, we got it here. Now for the box component, I'm just going to give it like a simple width and a simple height. 
um, like the minimum width so to support full responsiveness and make it work on mobile like most supported mobiles I'm just gonna give it like a width of 280 pixels and uh, this way it just like you know it's perfectly aligned for all mobiles and for all computers and you can just you know scale it up if you want it for like bigger or larger screen displays with larger resolutions uh, but that's really we're looking for I'm gonna also put a minimum height for this um, well let's say um, I'm gonna use it like a 550 pixels uh, okay for that so I'm gonna use this point flex I'm gonna have a flex direction of a column and um, yeah so that that probably should be it for the first points before we need also we might need some border radius since you saw them before uh, when it just like you know just soft edges really soft edges to make it look, look more modernized so I can use something like uh, I don't know 19 pixels or something you can do the job uh, now we also want like a background color for it so we want it to be full white so I can do FFF full full white um, the other thing also I want like a box shadow to just like make it stand out of the page it just like makes it this borderized or look much more better so there's actually a zero zero here and I'm gonna be using like something like two pixels in here I'm gonna put RGBA and I'm gonna put like something like 15 so 15, 15 uh, 0 0.28 I think okay and also since you've seen before the animation and everything that goes on, on that curve thing so um, if I could probably show you that so for this one um, like this this rounded thing that's this container that comes from the top and animates all the way to the bottom so we're gonna be creating it is pretty much simply uh, using of course border radius and stuff like that but it's gonna be absolute position so we have got the container which is the account box container and it has to like be relative so this one's gonna have like a relative position to its parent position if you got the points of uh, basic CSS design and stuff like that so this is exactly what I'm gonna be doing it from that particular side um, also I'm gonna put position like relative okay mm -hmm. and last but not least I'm gonna also have overflow um, to be hidden so if any overflow comes whatsoever like if these uh, of course the other round is Jericho gonna go out of the borders so we want to completely hidden like contained inside of the container I'll explain this a little bit more once we go deeper so this is the box container this is basically what we're gonna be needing for that um, now the parse port is actually the drop that we're gonna be create this like the orange drop like the water drop we're gonna be creating it's gonna make all the animation and stuff like that so yeah let's go and create this real quick in here I'm gonna call this um, I could drop uh, make sure to do this like that so I'm gonna do all this style diff and first things first I'm gonna put this as a position of absolute okay I'm gonna have display flex on it I'm also gonna have a flex direction of column so anything goes inside of that it could be like um, flex aligned in a column and everything um, well the other one is actually the most interesting part is actually the border radius so we want it to be full like more like an egg shaped so we can put a 50% border radius not border border radius so a border radius of a 50% is going to give it like this um, the full circle shape but if you like manipulate the width and the height like we make the height or the aspect ratio of the width to the height and where the height is actually way much less uh, compared to the width of, of the an aspect ratio of course so it's gonna create us this egg shapes more like an earth shaped so this is basically what we're gonna be doing right in this particular part I'm gonna have a width of like let's say 300 percent because I'm gonna have it enlarged so it just like goes out of the boundaries and only gets the bottom container of it uh, being showed up and for that particular one we can uh, I don't know have it like a uh, 550 pixels uh, like this one have in here so let me just take this a little bit bigger or can we like um, I don't know so let, let just like just leave it here right here and here for the width 300 is too much 160 is way much better so this one can do perfectly the job um, for what we exactly want it to be right now so everything should be going good right now uh, also we need to like uh, like 
do all the transforming. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but before doing any of that, we create the top container. So this top container is gonna be the container that contains this backdrop and contains the tile where you saw like welcome back or create an account or something. So therefore, we're gonna have it as a div again. Um, we're gonna have a width of 100%, so it takes the full width. For height, I'm gonna make it take 250 pixels. So don't worry about this 550 because this first is positioned in an absolute manner. And the second, we're gonna just, you know, take it higher. So it's just like gonna overflow at like a minus Y position. Um, so it just goes out of the, the actual boundary here. And that makes sense in that particular uh, place. So we got here displaying, we're gonna have flex. So flex direction again, I'm um, gonna have a column um, real quick because we're gonna display stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna have align items or pretty much justify um, contents to, let's say flex end because we wanna show it at the end and all of that, but still not really sure about stuff like that. Uh, also, we can introduce some padding. So it wants only a padding from the left and the right. So we can ignore that, we can put it like 1.8 AM and also we can put some padding to the bottom where we got it like to the end, but we wanna just like create this spacing between uh, the top and the bottom. So we can have padding bottom and we can include something like uh, 5 AM or something, uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, without further ado, let's just gonna render these what I've created so far. So we got, uh, let's call this, this is actually the box container. So box container, um, the other one is actually top container and the backdrop uh, container. So yeah, so this one, I'm just gonna create it as a normal component. So I'm not gonna put anything inside of it yet. And well, yeah. Um, yeah, right now there isn't actually any background color, so we can go ahead and use a service like uh, linear gradients generator or something like that that generates me some colors. So we can we can do that real quick right now. Um, we can go to like uh, CSS gradients.io and it can go to flat UI colors uh, from all the places here to generate some colors. So hopefully before all that, I actually generated some colors here. I put this on a 20 for full yellow and here like orange. So you get this like linear gradients background uh, going from full yellow all, from the left all the way to the right to the orange to create this nice uh, to add like uh, 58 degrees. And I got that. So you can get colors I've done from flatui.com and you can grab them. I love this website for the color panel by the way. So yeah, you can, you can grab them from here and you can have got everything. So you can copy to the clipboard as I did with before close that, I uh, can go back here and I can put the background. So here we've got linear gradients, we've got everything we are gonna be needing in that particular part without any issues. So we've got the background going on, we've got everything. So yeah, let's try to test this out. Let me just control S, go to the object.js and uh, let's include, all right. So account box, okay. So this is normally uh, just a normal component. Okay, we can, um, we can go right now. Well, yeah, there you go. So at least it displays. Uh, we got this really nice border going on inside of that and everything. Let me just zoom that in a little bit so you can you can see it much bigger, I know. I, of course, you can change the, the sizes. I'm creating this primarily thinking uh, or putting in mind responsiveness and mobiles first, but you can change the width and height depending on like uh, media queries using CSS media queries, of course, but that doesn't really matter that much, uh, actually. So here we got this one. Let's go ahead and rotate it and just take it down a little bit and create some, you know, some sizes for it, some margins for it to make it look a little bit better. Um, for that particular case, I am what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so let me just check out the account box. So perfectly, if you'd like to check out, um, where is that? So we got the top. Let's try to do like a top from like minus uh, 290 pixels from the top and from like the left we can we can do something like minus 70 pixels. Um, yeah, so this is exactly what the values works the best for me, but you can pretty much go ahead and check it out yourself. You can, you can put as many values as you want uh, and just try to go through all of these. Um, so if you go right here, as clearly seen here, 
it doesn't really look that perfect. So we need to introduce some like degrees transforming. So I'm gonna do transform and I'm gonna do rotate. I'm gonna rotate this through like, I don't know, let's use 60 degrees, just like halfway through uh, rotation. So yeah, it's kind of like created the shape we wanted. It doesn't look like more like a circle. It's much more like an egg shaped and we got only like the part of the egg of like going down from the left side and going up from the right side. And this is exactly what we want to create. It just looks, looks a really curved one. And beside the linear gradients as well works great between this kind of like yellowish to the orangish color. And it does make sense for all of that. It just goes all the way to the left. Um, yeah, I just like, you know, it works for me. You can go in and tweak, the, as I said before, if you love one more, or you can change the linear gradients if you don't really like the yellow, as I do. Because we're JavaScript developers, by the way, so yeah, we all love yellow. Uh, never mind. So this is exactly what we've got as a top container. If we go in and inspect the page real quick, what we're going to be seeing is, so you get the first one in here is actually the first container. So the second one we are going to have is pretty much the top container we created. So you see the padding is quite huge on it. So there is some padding on it, and this is exactly what we're going to be needing to put everything that we would like to. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to be creating some like header for it and everything. So uh, let me just put got header to container here. So here's actually the backdrop. And for this backdrop, we can we can set up like some Z index for it. I, I will talk about that in a second. So we can do like header container. Now we want to put some text like we'll come back or create an account or something. So I'm going to use styled and I'm going to use ht for it. And I'm going to do a font or this is actually the container. Okay, it should be a div. I don't know, I'm putting h2 on it. Um, so I'm going to have a width of 100%. I'm going to have a display, a flex and a flex direction of uh, all right, a column should do the job. And I think, um, well, yeah, I think that should do the job perfectly for that particular case. Now let's go and create the header. So header text styled h2. And for that, I'm gonna have some font size for it. So font size, I'm gonna change it. Um, well, let me check what I've used here. Uh, well, depending, so I'm just gonna use, um, well, let's see 30 pixels, okay? So 30 pixels should look really great. And also, I don't know, kind of like mentioned that, but let's go ahead and check out the font. So if you go to index.css, I've already included a font called Poppins, if I'm spelling that right. But you can grab this font from Google Fonts, or you can just copy the code right here. So Poppins, I'm including it. It just likes, it gives this really smooth and kind of like um, stylish, uh, longer font sizes with this font and I just love it. It's much more better than Roboto or Open Sans. And yeah, it just does the job perfectly. So I'm using this and also I'm setting it to the font family on the body in here, just by default to be used for any text that has no default uh, poppins or has the, no default font family, by the way. So let's go and do line height. And by the way, I'm including all the weights of that, like from going from 400 to 900. So yeah, there's no issues with that as well. Uh, this is not line height, line weight. Okay, it's fun weight. Something is wrong with me, definitely. So here for the line height, I'm gonna put something like uh, 1.2. Okay, 1.2 or like uh, I can increase a 3 to, uh, let's say it's gonna be 1.24, just line height. Um, well, yeah, that should be it. For the color, I'm just gonna use an FFF and that should do the job. Now, if you put some headers, so let's kind of do, this has got the bug drop in here. I'm not gonna be overriding it or something. I'm gonna have the header container. And I'm gonna have the header text. So for this one, we can say, welcome back. For example, this is actually the login page or something. I'm just gonna say, welcome first. I'm gonna copy all of that. I'm gonna say, back. Okay. Um, yeah, so as far as we sell here, if we just like refresh the page, you're not gonna get anything at all because why? Because we got this actually absolute position and always absolute containers, absolute div, divs, 
uh, have like a higher Z index than other elements. So we have to increase the Z index of this H2 element. So we can do like a Z index of 10 or something. And this should show it up up here. And we got welcome and back. And I don't know why like line height is not working perfectly or something. Uh, it's really like, um, well, I think because the H2 by default has some margin on it. So you can say just like margin zero and that should do the job. And there you go. So we've got a really smooth text in here going like welcome back and, and stuff like that. So we can put like the small text we saw before, like please sign in to continue or something like that. So you could add anything or you can totally ignore it, but I will add something right here. So I'm going to do um, small text. It's going to be style.h5. So it's going to have a color of FFF. Uh, font weight as well, I'm going to have a 500 uh, font size, I'm going to have an 11 pixels of that font size, and well, I think that should do the job right now. So here, going beneath, so I'm going for that, so I'm going to just do, uh, please sign in to continue. So let's check that out. It doesn't show because we've got again the Z index issue. So make sure to change out the Z index. Uh, if you get it back, uh, there you go. It kind of shows, but it doesn't do what we want it to do. So we can do margin zero. It goes all the way down here, but we don't want it to be this way. So therefore, I'm going to just like uh, add some margin to the top. So I can say margin zero for all of the others, and just by default, use margin top of like uh, six pixels. Um, well, six to eight pixels. It kind of like uh, does a better job for that. So I will go with seven pixels and I think it does uh, a better job for that particular case. And yeah, it looks pretty great right now. So we got this container, we got the egg shapes. Just clearly see if you thought before, like when you saw the design, if you thought this, oh, this is super hard to create. Not really, just like uh, utilizing the flex box and just some, you know, absolute positioning and know exactly how CSS works. It just gives you a lot of advantages on how to work faster and create minimal and yet good designs with no time. So this one is quite interesting and you've got to check it out. So we're jumping back in here. And as we saw in the image before, so we got like, like forms going beneath of that. But before going anywhere throughout the forms or anything, so let's try to kind of like uh, implement the animation. So what we want is actually this one to go all the way down uh, once we click it. But uh, yeah, we want to use a frame of motion for all of that once we create the actual form. So whenever, once we get the form here, like a login form or something, and we click, for example, oh, we want the sign up. So we click the sign up, this one goes all the way down and it goes all the way up. Then we see the sign up form and it just like transitions from login to register form and vice versa. So this is exactly what we're gonna be doing in that particular case uh, using this cool transition. It just like makes it like, I don't know, you, you move from one screen to another screen, like a cinematic uh, move or cinematic transition or something like that. And it, it really looks good. So for that case, let's go and create uh, some like forms for this. So I'm going to create the login and the register form. So I'm going to first create a common.gsx file. And this file is going to actually hold some common components. For example, like a text, like an input. They're going to be used between or among these forms. So we're not going to recreate all these components. So I'm going to be doing. So here I'm going to do like a login form.gsx. And I'm gonna call the other one sign up form gsx again. So I'm just gonna put some common components right here on it. So let's create any common components like the container to the form, the form container, input buttons, everything we want. So first, um, we export cons. I call this like box container. And I'm gonna use type components mostly. We're not gonna create like custom uh, React components for that. So I'm going to give here, I already got style components. So for example, here we can, uh, let me just remove this. So we can say width, 100%. Um, we can say height. Well, we don't really care about the height, so it can be anything at all. 
Now we can have this play as flex. So flex direction as column because we want to show like a form. So everything is just beneath each other's. And we want to align items to be horizontally centered. So we can do align item center. And also for the form, since this is actually going to be the parent or the main container of the login or register form. So we want to have like a margin for the top. So let's like margin top, let's say 10 pixels, okay? Uh, pretty cool. Now let's import the other one. This is going to be like the form container that holds up everything. So it's going to be like form container style dot div. We're not going to be using a div, we're going to use in a form. And yeah, so for this one, I'm going to use in display flex again, flex direction as column, and the same thing of the width. So width 100%. And that should do the job perfectly for us uh, right at the bat. So without any issues, we've got form container, we've got box container, and this one is going to hold everything that we want. So it's actually our HTML form that you know handles submission, handles values, everything you do uh, normally do pretty much in React and stuff like that. And let's also create some like um, muted links or like hyperlinks. For example, you want you forgot totally forgot about your password, so you say forget password. You click that. So yeah, we're gonna create this muted grayish text about that component. So I'm gonna do like muted. Uh, I'm gonna name it muted link because it's gonna be hyperlink. So I'm gonna do style dot a, and therefore I'm gonna for this I'm gonna do um, let's say font size is gonna be twelve pixels with a color of a grayish color. So for the grayish color, I'm gonna use RGBA. I'm gonna use two hundred, two hundred, two hundred. Okay, 0.8. I think that does should do the job perfectly. I'm gonna also use a font weight of 500, just to make it assumable like a regular. Um, yeah, and also make sure to do text decoration because we're gonna want. Uh, I think. Okay. So I don't know why this happens, but text decoration on to remove underlining. And yeah, so this this pretty much should do the job perfectly for that particular case. Um, I don't know. Let's let's go and move into the other one. This is a muted link. Also, we might want like something since we are pretty much using the theme of like a yellow theme. So we want links. For example, you want to move to the sign up. You say, oh, you already have an account. You can click sign up, and we want this sign up keyword to be highlighted in yellow to make it more. Uh, you know, user friendly and to make it match the UI color schema and everything around that. So we can go in here like bold link. <coughs> so, um, where is it? A. Alright, so we can have the same thing in here, I think. Only the color is going to be changing. <laughs> Um, let's grab the color from the index here and already got the color. So this is the main color I'm going to be using. Uh, let's put it right here and that should do the job perfectly for us. So there you go. So we've got some links, we've got form containers and box containers. Now the most important part is actually a styled input that looks elegant, tidy and just does the job perfectly. So I'm going to do like export const input equals styled dot input. And uh, for this one, at first, I'm going to just do like, um, well, on focus, I just like the outline to be none. So there's no outline. Also, on focus, you need to put no outline. So this is the first thing to remember to do an output. And also, I need to increase the width and the height uh, of that. So I can increase the height of this uh, to make it a little bit better. So I can use something like, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. 45 to 42 pixels and also I want to use full width available width obviously so this can do a better job obviously for, for that particular case and for borders we can use something like um, okay one pixel solid and we can we can have something like more grayish and transparent toward that so we can do RGBA to 200 200 200 uh, we can have um, well, 0 0.1 or I don't know. I, I wanted the border to be super muted. So you can do 0 0.3. Okay. This one sounds a little bit better. I think um, we might also want to increase or put some batting. So for the placeholder to be matched correctly, 
uh, I want some padding to be put inside of that. So we want no up and down padding, but we still want like 10 pixels of padding from left to right, uh, if that makes sense, obviously. Um, well, that, that should do the job. I think I'm doing box sizing in here. So if index.css, I got some box sizing. So where is that? Yeah, I'm actually putting all elements to have a box sizing of a border box, and that should do the job perfectly for us. And last but not least, I'm gonna have some border bottom. Um, let's say 1.4 pixels solid and should be transparent. Why I'm putting this line of code? Because when introducing a new border, whenever like a user focuses on the import or just like hovers over the input and you introduce a new border, this kind of just like, it just takes off the height of it. It just like adds a new size to the input and that just like changes the style of the height, changes the style of the page. You don't want that. You always want to add like uh, a full back border that is transparent. It doesn't show to the user, but it's there. Once you change it on hover, it never changes the style height to the style size and makes the design look awesome. So this is actually my tip on like my experience of designing. So you could pretty much use that on your projects, obviously. Uh, it really looks good. Now let's introduce the placeholder. Um, for this, I'm gonna just change the placeholder color. I'm gonna use, again, 200, 200, just for the grayish look. I'm gonna use one, okay. All right, let's just keep it like this. It's not a big deal. And also I wanna just like add some, I don't know, border bottom to the last elements. So I can have knots in here. Okay. So last of type, I need to remove this. I can do bottom bottom to be like, um, I don't know, one, five pixels, solid RGBA. And it can have the same grayish color looking stuff. So 200 and you can have 0 0.4. So this is actually all CSS. That's why I'm going super fast on it. I don't wanna waste much time on CSS. That is quite regular and you all know CSS. And last but not least, we can add some borders once we focus. And we wanna add the same style of the border like in a yellowish color. So we can do uh, bottom, bottom. Once we focus on the inputs, we can have two pixels of that solid. And, um, well, let me see. So this this is the these, you know, yellowish color, our theme color, and how does it look like? And that should probably do the job, I think. Oh, this is actually a mute link, sorry. I actually copied the wrong one. Yes, there you go. Um, run with this this should do the job now we got to simply an input and uh, last but not least we're not also going to be needing a button so just like a simple really awesome rounded button that I'm going to be working with um, so let's create this with just like simple hover effect I'm going to name this as submit button equals styled dot button uh, so for this one I'm going to have a width of 100% so it takes the full available width and um, I'm gonna introduce some, um, well, let's say some padding to it, okay? So let's have uh, 14 pixels and 40%. So why I'm putting this 40%? In case of like the 100% width doesn't work, just adding this 40%, you know, padding, it's just gonna make it look bigger. So yeah, it's just like kind of a fallback. That's why I'm adding it there. Uh, I'm gonna have a color of this like that. Uh, font size, we can we can use all 15 pixels. Uh, we can do a font weight of, uh, let's say, 600 font weight. For borders, you always wanted to override the, you know, the default car buttons borders, and this is what you need to do. And last but not least, gonna be having like a border radius. Um, well, for that border, border radius, you want like all the corners, only the corners to have this like rounded, smooth colors or corners, obviously. So I'm gonna add something like 100 pixels, 100 pixels from left, 100 pixels from top right, to bottom. Mm, yeah, so this line of code should do the job perfectly for rounding all of that. And also I'm gonna put some cursor to be a pointer and have it like a transition. So transition effects, I'm gonna have it all. I'm gonna just introduce some 240 milliseconds and easing out. That should do perfectly the job for us. 
Uh, also, I want for the bottom to have the same background color of the backdrop that we've introduced earlier. So right here, we got this linear gradient. So I'm going to be using the same thing for the background of the bottom, just to make it look stylish and just like, you know, matches the same theme. And last but not least, what I'm going to be doing is actually some hover effects. So once you hover the button, I'm going to have some filter going on. I'm going to increase the brightness to 1.03 something. You, you don't want to increase so much brightness because it's going to make it look awful. Just a little tiny increase will do perfectly the job for us. And there you go. So this is all the components we need, all the common components are going to be needed through all these, all these forms. Um, yeah, so let's jump into the login form real quick. We're going to have import react again. So here I'm going to export a function, it's going to be named login form. It's going to have props and everything. And here I'm going to return the box container. So the box container we created on the common, I'm going to have a form container inside of it. And I'm going to have an input, just simple an input. I'm going to have it from there. So first you're going to have a placeholder of, let's say email. So he logs in using an email. And you can put this as you know, like a type of email. You can use HTML5 validation methods. So let's let me copy the the input right here. Um, I can I can put a password for this. So password type password. Uh, nothing too complicated actually. Everything goes pretty simple on that. Um, we can introduce some muted links. So we can have some marginer. I think that is available somewhere here. Okay, let me just gonna manually import it. So it's gonna be um, marginer from marginer, and this one it takes actually a direction of vertical and how much margin you want to introduce. Uh, for me, I can introduce like six pixels or five pixels. That should be the job. So this component just creates margins between components and it's really, really useful uh, for like putting together a declarative API and this helps a lot. So we can have this right here and last but not least, we can have the submit button. So we can have submit button. We can have it a type of a submit. Make sure to always do that. And you can have this like a sign in. Um, yeah, so this one, this should do a job. Uh, but before that, we want to have like a link to, if you forget the password, you can reset it. So you can have like a, a muted link. So you can have HRF, just put it as an MC. Um, so forget your password. Did you forget your password? Forget your password, just like put it like this. Also, I'm going to copy the margin. I'm going to increase a little bit more margin. From that perspective, we're going to have an one EM here just to make it look a little bit better. And yeah, so this, this should do the job perfectly. Let's just going to try it out real quick on the index.jsx. So right here on the account box, uh, I can have a, got here a header container, top container. I'm going to have a content container, so or inner container more precisely. So we can have inner container equals style.div. And therefore, I'm going to have a width of 100%. Um, display of a flex, flex direction of a column, as always. And yeah, so this this one should do the job perfectly. So let's have it in a container. Now we can have a login form. Components. Okay. So if you go right here, um, that's what we got because we've got no padding whatsoever. So it's kind of like going out of control and you don't want this to happen. So let's introduce some padding to, well, I think the inner container would do the job here because I'm having some padding right on the top. Uh, if I remember on the top container, we got padding 1.8 uh, from left and right. So we can have the same here. So I can have padding 0, 1.8 EM. And that should do the job perfectly for us. It's clear to see, it actually does. It does a really good job. And here the transition actually works on the bottom. It looks pretty decent and pretty good. So yeah, no worries on, on that particular side of things. Um, yeah, so this one works. 
uh, forget your password right here but for some reason the form in here doesn't really look that great so let me just check out uh, I think I'm not introducing enough margin so let's see if I am introducing enough margin here um, okay there's definitely something wrong with the form container I think um, yes I think so so for the form container I'm definitely missing some box shadow to have it stand out because we want the form container to have some box shadow to pretty much perfectly have it um, showing and I don't want this to be inside of that so okay there you go um, it should look better here but the transition doesn't really work on the, on the pretty much input so I might put in any transitions whatsoever so we can put transition all uh, 20 milliseconds is in and out for the actual input and that should do the job perfectly for us I think yeah it does a better job in a perfect way uh, with all of that so I think this one is, is quite good going all the things around here yeah it does a better job in that particular perspective um, we can change the font size of this to make it look a little bit smaller so we can do font size 15 pixels uh, that increases it okay, 13 pixels uh, 11 okay that is too small 12 it should be a better one so here we got the password, you can have an email here and everything should be active without any issues. So yeah, so we got a really good form uh, or a login form more precisely. And here for forget password, I might put in the wrong one. So I think media link should be 11 uh, pixels so you can have it in a better way. And also we can introduce some other margin like 1.4 EM and uh, we can have even more. 1.6 or something and I think that should do the job also I might need other margin to pretty much like transition between uh, login and sign up and stuff like that so I can have it one in here I can have like a, a muted link a try out of empty and uh, so I say already or don't have an account and it can have a bold, so that is exactly why we use the bold there. So you can have href again, and you can say sign up. Okay, should do the job perfectly now. If you go back, so guys, if you don't have that, you can pretty much sign up. And for the colors, why it's not taking effects whatsoever. So bold link, bold link here. Well, it's actually working, but I'm using this actually like a yellow filter and it didn't seem to be actually it's under yellow. Um, yeah, totally silly for that guys. But anyhow, so this is actually the third for the login form. Let's jump into creating the sign up form. It's gonna be the same thing. So I'm just gonna do login. I'm gonna copy this one, simply paste it. All I need to change is just like add a couple of fonts in here. So for example, you can add um, confirm password and you can have, have another another one so we can have or it's going to be like full name so you can introduce your full name and this one is going to type of a text uh, simple here and here I'm just going to name this as a sign up uh, form so yeah so this one should do create the sign up form and everything now what we exactly need and the last most important part is actually playing the animation and playing the transition between these components so now what we want once we click on sign up so he just like this one goes all the way down and we just like remove the login page we render the form or the, the sign up page and then just like take this backdrop back again to its original position and just like lets the client or the user create an account and sign up so this is exactly what we want and this is the reason why we are going to be using uh, frame of motion to create this motion kind of thingy so here for the backdrop 
I'm using a style.dev. I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to use in motion. So I'm going to import motion. It's going to allow us to control that. So I'm going to do a motion from frame or motion. And here we can have motion.dev. As simple. So that's going to do the same thing. Style component is going to work correctly. No worries at all. Um, so this is exactly what we need to do right now. Now for this like backdrop, we can provide animate and we can provide many stuff. So let's create some create state in here, which determines if it is currently being expanded or collapsed. Like, I mean, if this one is expanded, like goes all the way down or collapsed, which is the original state, which currently stays right here. So let's see here uh, is expanded, set expanded. I'm normally going to use some react state here. I'm going to say false because first it is not expanded whatsoever. And I'm going to be using frame of motion variance. So variance going to allow us to toggle between different states. For example, when it's expanded, you change the style. Like you give it a full width style, a full height style, like 120 degrees and stuff like that. And once it's not, like when it's collapsed in a normal state, you give it a different, completely different CSS style. And this is exactly what we're going to be needing right here. So I'm going to name this like uh, backdrop variance. So I can do variance like that. And it's kind of like an object of objects. First, it, the first key in here represents the actual state. So here, for example, we want it to be like expanded. So for this one, I'm gonna like configure it to a specific style. And we can say, for example, if it's expanded, we're gonna increase the width and the height and everything. We're gonna play the animation. Um, therefore, let's say I'm gonna have like 233% uh, of a width because before right here we got 160 so we want to increase full width and play the animation of course so you just like you know you remember css3 keyframes so you go like from width of like for example 10 pixels to width 200 pixels and it just does all the animation right here and this is exactly what we're going to be doing right in that case i'm also going to have to increase the height and make it take the full height because we're going to play this animation all the way down so we can have for example um 1050 pixels because it's quite huge and you've got this width ratio so you have to increase a lot of height in order to get that uh, point. Uh, also we want to include some border radius to it. So I could change the border radius and it can decrease it a little bit because right now we don't want this egg shaped thing. We just like want it to be a more of like a rectangular shaped. So yeah we can we can have it this way and we can just decrease it to 20%. And last but not least we can have transform and we can put rotate. So you can like decrease some rotation or pretty much like uh, increase it a little bit. You can have it to be 60 degrees. So for this one, for the expanded state, like the transition is happening, but for a normal state, you want it to be collapsed. Okay. So for the collapsed one, I'm gonna have a normal width of like as before we did it. So it's 160 pixels or percent. Uh, for the highs, you're gonna have the same thing, like 550 pixels. Um, border radius, so we have the same thing again. So fifty percent, like full circular or egg shaped, and you can have a transform of the uh, rotation, and we can have sixty degrees. Okay. So this is by default. By the way, this is actually both out of the default, but it's better to provide them here, even though they haven't changed. Uh, for the animation to go smooth as possible and of course it's better for them to be shown right here so we can provide this variance so we can say uh, variance and you can provide them to backdrop variance right into here and now what we want is actually the animate state so here we give it exactly the variance name or the variance key for example you give it expanded and it plays the expanded animation we give it collapse and it plays that so i want to give it depending on the state so if it is expanded uh, what we want, we want it to have an expanded state, the same as the valve on the variant, and otherwise, if it's not expanded, we have it to be collapsed. So it actually applies this style, otherwise, it applies the expanded style. Now, this one, the enemy is going to play right off the bat whenever on on mount. So whenever we refresh the page or something, is this automatically plays? We don't want this. We want it to only play once a style or once the stage is actually changes. So we can do like, uh, so play, or it's actually initial 
uh, value in here. So it's clear property variant label or a variant set to false to initialize with the values to animate, disabling the mount animation. And this is exactly what we want. So we can have initial to be false. So we can have no mount animation whatsoever going on over there. And this is exactly what we want. Now we want to change and toggle between these animations. So we can create a couple of like helper methods that are gonna do that for us. So let's say I'm gonna switch to, mm -hmm. so let's say, um, okay, let's, I'm gonna call a method in here. So I'm gonna do like uh, play expanding animation. So this method, I want it to be playing the expanding and the collapsing animation, like play, transition animation. So uh, that's better, uh, I don't know, let's, let's just leave it like this. So we want to first put it as expanded to be true. Of course, because we wanted to expand it all the way down. So we see in here, we want to take this all the way down right here and play the first expanded animation. So this one goes true and here this goes to expanded because by default it's false. Now afterwards, but not immediately, we also get it back to false, which means we play the animation and after like an amount of time, like three seconds or four seconds, we grab it back. So therefore we're gonna use the set timeout to declare a specific timeout that's gonna play this animation on. So we can have set expanded to be false, but only after a set amount of time. For example, we can have uh, like three seconds, okay? Just do that after the three seconds and this should do the job perfectly. Um, so for this one, I'm not gonna be doing um, right here. So we're just gonna control S, save it. I can have some like a paragraph what goes down in here, like click me. And once you click that, so you're gonna play expanding animation, okay? So let's check it out. You click me, you play the expanding animation, and it kind of like takes a little bit of time, it goes back. But as you see, the animation was super fast because he was using like spring animation and we didn't control the speed, neither the duration, uh, nor the stiffness or anything like that. And see this, I said before pretty much, frame of motion is a spring animation. So bounciness, stiffness, all of these like kind of configurable values play a major role through the animation and how it pretty much looks to the end final users. So it's gonna create this real quick in here. I'm gonna do like uh, expanded transition. And this is actually the configuration for the transition. I'm gonna have like a type of spring. So you choose what type of animation you're gonna be praying is the spring. Uh, the duration it takes, for example, I'm gonna say 2.3. And this one, it takes it in seconds. Um, like, unlike the set timeout in here, it takes it in milliseconds. This one, it takes it in seconds. And for example, you can have a stiffness. So the stiffness of the spring, if you are familiar with the springs and how they work, how they collapse, how they expand, well, pretty much you know how stiffness is. It's just like the, the stiffness of the exact spring you want it, and this affects the overall animation uh, transition and how things go through this animation pretty much. So we're gonna have a stiffness. You don't want to have too high stiffness because it's gonna play super fast. So let's have it in just a middle, uh, about 30 here, and it should do the job perfectly, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so for this one, and also one thing you notice before, like once we click, it expands, but it takes a little bit longer time. We don't want that to pretty much collapse back again. So for this duration, we want it to play right after it finished expanding, which means right after 2.3 seconds, it starts collapsing again. So this is the point of just like playing expand, waiting for it to finish the animation, then collapse again. So we can have like expanding transition. I can have duration. Um, we can just go ahead and multiply this because this is actually seconds. We're gonna multiply by a thousand to convert this to milliseconds. And for example, let's see um, here, it pretty much depends on the animation and the stiffness. So you have to decrease like a set amount of values of like milliseconds to get it right. For example, for me, it worked like 1500, which is a second and a half and just like minus it, so it works exactly as anticipated. But once you play with this, if you want like less or greater duration in here and greater stiffness, you need to change this value in order to tweak it and make it look better depending on what you're exactly looking for. So yeah, this should do the job for me perfectly. And last but not least, I'm just gonna like do transition. Um, so expanding transition, make sure to provide that real quick. 
And if we click it now, as you see, it plays in a really smooth manner and just like plays super quick. It doesn't stay down or just, it doesn't go fast. It just play at the piece that we want it to be. So it plays all the way down, it changes the rotation, uh, it changes the height and the width and everything. It just goes all the way back again in a really smooth spring animation and it does it well. So this is exactly the key value that you wanna be uh, looking forward to on how to make this animation work perfectly. All right, so this is working now. We've got this plane expanding animation working. Now what we want is pretty simple. All we need to do is actually once we click on sign up, we want this to happen, we change it to uh, pretty much login and vice versa. So for that particular case, I'm gonna be using context. Of course, it's not quietly required, but you can you can use, you can pass this props, but I would love to use context in here just to show you guys how context works for some of you who doesn't know. So we can go in and do uh, account context. I'm gonna create a file, I'm gonna name it this, dot JavaScript. Well, for this one, I'm gonna export const uh, account context. So I'm going to do create context and this one is going to be imported from react here. So make sure to import it from react and here it takes the default value for me. I don't have any default values. So you can directly move into this. Now we can create here context value. So what value you're going to be providing. So this value is going to create two separate functions. One switches to the sign up and the other one switches to the login, like switches from login to sign up and switches from sign up to login. Uh, so here's switch to sign up. So for this one, what we want is actually play expanded animation first. Obviously, this is exactly what we need. The second one is actually create a new state that tells if we are currently in login state or in register state. So we can say active and set active. So you can do use state, you just have two values, either uh, sign in or sign up. So sign in at first, so by default, it's gonna be on the sign in tab in here. So whenever we got that, we can do like set active and we can have it to be sign, uh, well, it's moving to sign up, so we can have it to be sign up. But the problem in here, as always, we're gonna play the animation, but if we do this, the state gonna change immediately before the actual animation completes. So what we want is actually once this one goes all the way down, we change this, like we remove the login, we replace it with the form, like the sign up form, then we just like collapse it back again. So this is exactly the main point of the animation and how it works. So for doing that, we have to wait for a set amount of time before set active in here to take effect before changing the actual state. So we can use set timeout again, as always. It's actually a savior for set timeouts. You find like React applications always using it. And for that, we can, um, I don't know, we can have like a, a second or something to be used for that particular case, or you can have even less, like 400 uh, milliseconds. And then you can do set active to be sign up. Pretty simple, let's copy that and just like create uh, switch to, so sign in, all right. And this should be sign in as the above, and that should do the job. Now let's provide this into the context. So switch to sign up and switch to sign in. Pretty cool, we got both of these functions. Now we have to just use the account context in order to spread the context values and make other components like this child's being able to access context values and use them without explicitly passing them through all the props. So for here, what I'm gonna be doing is actually gonna do account box, or pretty much not the account box, sorry. So I'm gonna have account context. I'm gonna use the provider in that. So all of these, um, yeah, so got the provider. We can have um, the value in a passing context value. So here are the context value, we can ask it on the child's like the login and the sign up forms. So therefore we can, uh, or before I'm going any further on, let me just gonna remove this real quick. Now here we want to change depending on the state. So if it is actually a sign in, we choose to show the login form, otherwise we choose to show in the uh, sign up form. 
So we just simply check here if it's active equals sign in and so we can do login form. Pretty simple. Otherwise, so if it's that, we will do sign up form. Pretty cool. Also, we want to change this like welcome back and please log in and sign up depending on the state as well. So we can do the same. So sign in. And make sure to pretty much hold these. I think is actually inside of a container. Um, well, yeah, they are currently inside of a container. So here for the sign in and again for the sign up. We only need to change here. So welcome like create account, please sign up to continue. Pretty simple, uh, nothing too complicated actually. Now let's go ahead and use this here for the login form. Now I can use the use context hook. So we can do const uh, switch to sign up. I'm gonna do a use context hook. This one is gonna allow me to provide it with the context and get the context values out of this context. So account context. It's going to give me the switch to sign up and once we click on this bold uh, link in here for the sign up so if you click it i'm gonna have switch to sign up and this should do perfectly the job for us uh, right in that particular part so now let's go and copy this put it into the sign up form again do the same thing but this one so to sign in i'm going to import use context also need to import account context in order to make sure things are going to work perfectly the same way we want it to be. And last but not least, we're going to have on click, we're going to have switch to sign in. And yeah, so as far as I can tell, everything should be looking absolutely great right now. Um, I think I haven't pretty much changed the code because so active. Okay. I don't know, something, something is totally wrong with this. Uh, active sign in. Yeah, I'm using both sign in. So, okay, so that should do the job. So here we're actually in, in the sign in, which is the login form. If we wanna move into the sign up, we click this, we get this really amazing animation plays, and we got the form actually playing uh, all the way down right here. We get like create accounts, we get the text change it, we got everything. If you want to move back, which is by the way, I'm putting sign up in here, which it shouldn't be. So here is your like no forget password. So I can totally get rid of that here. And also here, it doesn't mean don't have an account, like already have an account. So it's copy pasting, super dangerous. Uh, yeah, you can you can pretty much sign up. So here, as I said before, also I totally forgot about doing something here, just adding some margin. So we can, um, all right, we can do like margin zero here and like four pixels from the left and the right, just to make it stand up. It's curious in here, it works better, yeah. So we've got sign in and this should be a sign in. Obviously, just copy paste it everywhere. So sign up and sign in. And yeah, so therefore it should be looking good all the way as well. So we can sign up, we can do sign in. So click on that, transition plays, we get all of that and get things going the right way. So yeah, it plays really great in a really awesome manner and everything works together fine with the context, with React State and everything out of the bat. So the animation is pretty smooth, especially using frame or motion and spring animation. It does perfectly the job that you are looking for. So yeah, so this is actually exactly the login register form that we wanted to create. Hopefully guys, you liked it because I pretty much enjoyed working on it. Uh, I spent actually a really good uh, like time working on that and trying to implement the animation. I loved it absolutely far. I can even include it on my production uh, like projects or open source projects because it looks elegant. Uh, but anyhow, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video tutorial as I did enjoy making it. So if you want this like blogging elegant thing, you can go to my GitHub. You can find the repository there. You can grab the code. You can use it whenever you want. And of course, do make sure to drop me a follow on GitHub. Why not? Or drop me a follow on Twitter because I'm pretty active there as well. 
And without further ado, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video story as always. And make sure to subscribe, push that like button, leave us a comment if you would like to the video or more videos like this. And see you hopefully in the next ones.